Welcome to Tyler's Toy Hauler. This week, Tyler's going to show us the inside of his toy hauler and how he makes it work as someone camping in a wheelchair. Good morning, all. Good morning. Well, so this door is big enough. My chair was zero degrees camber. It's only 24 inches wide, um, side to side. So it nice. will fit in this door, it'll, it'll squeeze. I don't put my fingers on the side, but it would go out of this door. So I could use a super arm lift um, to get in and out. Yeah. But it's very expensive. Um, so the ramp is built in and it's not that steep, but I can climb up it. Springs are supposed to assist you manually closing the door. But even for an able body to lift this door, it is heavy. Um, so when I wanted to do this independently, yeah. I added the little winch on the floor and a pulley up top that pulls my door closed. Right. So I've got it on the, on the side wall of the door is a little pass-through. Oh yeah, yeah. So I can put my remote for my winch outside or inside. Oh, So if okay. I want to leave, close yeah. this thing up, I can yeah. pull my winch control outside, close yeah. it up and I leave. But at night when I want to go to bed, I have the winch control inside so the door will close behind me. If I can get a campsite that I can get some momentum. Oh, you can just fly right in. That's the trailer. There's a view from the inside looking out. That is a powered bed that drops down to about the top of my hand cycle height. These are cupboards up above, but I've removed. This is a couch that folds down against the floor, but it's raining. So I haven't unloaded my generator, my hand cycle, my barbecue, all that kind of good stuff. So the couch will sit down and there'll be a little table that's on the back of the couch there. It clicks in these little holes in the floor. So this side's removed because I need it never to be put up so I can get past the couch um, and it just blocks the window when it's up so it's removed but also can access these upper cupboards because I can roll it underneath. These guys here with the couch up I can get them but the couch down they're not getting touched. Now if we pan away from the back door you come up to the kitchen area where there is a little stove top, a little countertop, microwave above, some shelf that has a little storage that no idea what's in there, never been out there. Down here is the little kitchen sink, some storage, upper cabinets. There's the refrigerator and a little shelf there and underneath the stove is a, a couple other little storage units. So here is the bathroom. There's the bathroom sink, a little more storage, a little upper vanity. There's the control panel and the brains for the solar panel. It's on the roof. A little bit of, you know, long coat storage. A little more cupboards down here for towels and face cloths, dirty laundry hamper. This is the toilet. Hmm, that's croaking on board. He gets beat up pretty good traveling. So there's the toilet. I cannot fit my chair in this little narrow door. So I sit on this little wheeled mechanic stool and I'll bring it out in the hallway right in front of me here, transfer on it and then roll backwards to the toilet and then transfer backwards off of it to the toilet. Here's the shower. So I'll sit on the toilet. I can transfer down to the floor of the shower if I need, transfer back up to the toilet and then back into my chair. And then up here is the, the master bed. This thing's huge. It could be a king size bed if you wanted. Some upper storage cabinets that I cannot reach until I'm in the bed, so they never get used. Hence the little duffel bag that goes in and out every day. We got it hooked up here for you to oh, yeah. we'll let we'll let Kara get out first. Okay. At the end of the Don't camping trip, this is how uh, Tyler puts his van sorry, his toy hauler back together again or gets it ready for travel. It's really helpful if you have lots of friends, otherwise it would be a very slow process.
Okay, this is Tyler, and he's from Kamloops. Kamloops. Can you tell me what level your injury is? T4, complete. T4, so that means you've got from about chest down. Yeah, you don't have. Yeah, sort of deal. Okay, right on. No core, I got the parabelly, prove it. Why did you get into? Camping? Yeah. It's, it's It was our weekend summers growing up. We got in the truck, loaded the camper in, took the boat out, went fishing, camping, sitting by the fire, burning marshmallows. Until you camping, did this. Camping was our jam growing up. And then when you grew up and had your own family, that was a thing too? Well, when I, when I got hurt, I was 19. So it was, you know, back to school, find out what kind of work you were going to do. Yeah. Find out where you're going to live, get all set up and yeah. work and responsible and sort of grab that piece of your life back. Yeah. And then camping was another thing I just loved. And at first got um, an old 75 Winnebago motorhome. Oh, really? And then this, this lift became available because some bus at some place was getting retired and anybody want a free lift and my dad heard about it so he drove the truck down and picked up this monster lift it was for a bus but the motorhome was quite high as well so he cut a hole in the side of the motorhome put a big door in it yeah. and mounted the lift in there and we use that they use it for drag racing originally oh really the most huh. so, and I never got hand controls in that because I was always racing with my buddies, so they'd just yeah. drive that. Yeah. And then when I moved to Kamloops, the bus or the motorhome stayed in Merritt with my buddies. And I was in Kamloops, and I would tow my car trailer with the race car to Ashcroft, and they'd come from Merritt, and we'd meet. And you were driving the race car? Yeah. Oh, I'd cool. I'd raced for t nearly 25 years. I'd drive race. Wow. Cars, trucks, and then I have raced uh, snowmobiles on asphalt. <laughs> they were set up for pavement. And okay. The, the snowmobile was the fastest vehicle I ever raced. Holy so cow. My race car was a full race car. It had the full roll gauge and the massive motor and yeah. would lift the front tires off the ground when it left. Holy. And it got to be boring. <laughs> you, you always want to go faster. And my buddies started racing the sled, so I was over there paying attention to their sleds more than I was paying yeah. attention to my own car. <laughs> so I'd go make a run close my door and I go and I start looking and asking questions about how the clutches and work and belts and all this stuff. Yeah. So then another guy that was racing snowmobiles with them sold his chassis. So I bought it, bought another sled and ripped the motor out of it and put it in this one for a race sled and cut. Holy. You guys had note? <laughs> yeah, we're going to rock and roll.